Hello and welcome to the third video in the DaVinci Resolve conforming series. Today we're going to have a look at using the Auto Scene Detect tool within Resolve and we're also going to talk about how to handle dissolves using this method. So to start we've got a continuous QuickTime file here. So Editorial has given us a baked in file to grade. As you can see there's a dissolve in here so it's our job to break this up into shots and grade this and deliver it back out. We'll use the Scene Detect tool which we can get to by right clicking our QuickTime file and you can see here we have a scene cut detection button. Before we click this, we're going to make sure that we have our media folder selected. We'll go ahead and hit scene cut detection. And here we are. Here's our scene detect window. So we've got three viewers up here. We have a scene graph down the bottom here. We can click and drag with our slider. And we have our cuts list, which will populate as soon as we use our auto scene detect feature. Also at the top right here, we have some menus. These are useful and we'll talk about these a little bit later in depth. Cool. So uh, the first thing uh, to note is that the four buttons down here are probably the most important. So we've got the auto scene detect button, we've got add cut point, delete cut point, and uh, add cuts to media pool. Once we click this, all of the cuts that we've made in this menu will be added to the media pool as individual shots. So to start off and to make things a bit easier in explaining, let's just go ahead and click the auto scene detect button. Okay, so what happened here? So Resolve has automatically analyzed our QuickTime and all of these green markers, Resolve has determined that these are cut points. The left-hand viewer is the last frame of the outgoing shot. This middle viewer is where our cursor is resting. And the right-hand viewer is the frame directly after the cursor. So as you see, as we jump through these shots that Resolve thinks are cut points, you can see a pattern on these viewers. We have first frame of the new cut in the middle and the subsequent frame directly to the right. We have the last frame of the outgoing shot on the left. As we go through and check these cut points, the middle and right-hand viewers should look very similar and the left-hand viewers should look completely different. So that's the sort of methodology to have in your head when you're going to check these cut points. But before we do that, let's discuss these gray lines and this pink line. So this pink line is actually a confidence threshold slider. So you can click and drag and you can see that as this pink line touches a gray line, it sort of enables it, it turns it green. So what does this mean? Well, when Resolve analyzes the scene, there are times where it's not too sure whether it is actually a cut point. So it might rate it lower down in the graph. So um, yeah, just a quick word about navigation. If you want to navigate to the next cut point, uh, you hit the N key, N for next. You can hit N to jump through your cut points here. Um, you can also hit P, P for previous, and that will jump you to the previous cut points. As you can see, just click on the cut list here and you will also jump to those cuts. This point here is what Resolve has deemed as a cut, but when it was going through, it wasn't quite sure whether this was a cut point. It's quite clear um, that it is a cut point, but for some reason Resolve hasn't given it enough weight as it has this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this pink line down. And now you can see that we've introduced these two gray lines as cut points. So if we go P, you can see that it is added in the cut list here. And we now have this as a successful cut point. So depending on the success of your auto scene detect, you can adjust this pink confidence threshold slider. The thing that I like to do when I start a scene cut detect is I go to these dark gray lines and see whether they are cut points. So we're going to go ahead and jump here and we're going to use the left and right arrow keys to just jump frame by frame. Okay, so this is our cut point. So this gray line is correct. So because there's no other lines here, I'm just going to slide this down quite low. And now you can see that this, if we hit P for previous, now this is correctly identified this as a cut point also. We'll talk about how to handle this dissolve at the end, but for now let's go ahead and check our cut points. So we're going to drag our cursor to the start and hit N for next. Okay, and again, as mentioned before, we're going to look for two similar shots on the right and middle, very different shot on the left. So this is a correct cut. We're going to jump to the next point with N. Again, similar pattern, correct. We're going to jump to the next shot using N. We're going to ignore the dissolve for now. Okay, that's correct. N for next, correct, correct. Correct, and as you can see, if we jump back to the previous with P, if this is the new cut, when we hit N, we should expect to see similar framing on the left hand. So you see, we've got a close-up of this guy. We hit N, the close-up's now the last frame of the preceding shot. I'm gonna hit N for the next shot. Correct, and N for the last shot. Okay, so that's worked completely, and if we wanted to make doubly sure, we could just scroll in between our green markers and make sure that there's no big cuts. But this is all good, obviously, except for the dissolve. Now, just briefly before we add these cuts to the media pool, I want to quickly talk about the prune tool. So if these uh, dark gray lines were slightly higher, we can mock this up by just 
dragging the line very low. Uh, you can see that all of these would be added as cut points. And as you can see on the cut view, we don't want all of these frames to be introduced to the media pool as one frame clips. That's not helpful to anyone. So if we wanted to delete a large group of cut points at once, what we could do is we could drag the cursor to the beginning and hit I to mark an end point drag them to the end and hit O to do an out point. And we can go ahead to this prune tool. And what it will do is it'll remove all of the cut points except for one. Uh, Resolve will try and guess what the best cut point is out of those. So we're gonna go ahead, hit prune. And you can see if we hit P, that's the point that Resolve has decided is the most accurate point. Uh, we are going to delete this. So we can either hit the delete key or hit the minus key. And you can see now that last cut is gone. If we wanted to add a point, we can go ahead and click the plus. You can see that adds 100% cut point in our scene there. To reset our marks, we'll go up to the top right hand menu, reset marks. So that's a way, I mean, obviously in this case, we could have just dragged our confidence line up and that would have nulled all of these gray markers. If you had a really strong cluster of green marks and you wanted to prune them, um, instead of having to delete them all, one by one, you can use the prune tool. Now, if we wanted to save this scene cut and come back to it later, we could go up to the top right hand menu. We could save this as a scene cut file, and we could also load an additional scene cut file in if we have one pre-saved. Okay, so now we've done that, let's go ahead and add the cuts to the media pool. You don't get any dialog box. There's no thing that comes up to say you've done it. It's very anticlimactic. So you can just go ahead, close this scene detect viewer, and here are your files. If you go ahead and open up the scene cut detection again, everything's saved. So when you quit out of this tool, it does not clear the progress that you've made. But again, if you are leaving it or quitting the program, make sure to go and save your scene cut to continue it at a later date. We're gonna go ahead and close this. We can left click our first clip, shift click our last clip, and create a new timeline here. We'll call this test scene cut. We'll drag this into our sequences and double click this here to jump into our edit tab. So you can see, now we have all of these clips ready and available as individual shots to grade, except for this dissolve. So when you have a dissolve, the best thing to do is to go back to editorial and ask for the A side of the shot and the B side of the shot with individual handles so that you can recreate the effect in Resolve. So if I go to the media tab, you can see that here we have a shot A and a shot B. These have been supplied from editorial with handles. So I'm gonna go ahead, create an additional folder here, drag these guys in, and in the edit tab, I can go ahead and dissolve this clip over first shot. Again, if we delete this, now you can see that if we jump to the color tab, we can start creating crazy grades individually without worrying about cross-contaminating either shot with any of our specific grades. So guys, that is how to use the Scene Cut Detect tool within Resolve. Hopefully that's been helpful. If you do have an EDL or you just want to learn a little bit more about conforming in Resolve, make sure to check out my part one and part two of the series. Go ahead and check out my Patreon. It has some extra few resources in there, including an extra long conforming tutorial. Thanks for tuning in guys. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.